Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can get any documentation here, in this case, HTMX documentation, and use uh, the new GPT-4 to actually extract the essential elements from that documentation and turn it into elements in a JSON file. The reason for doing this is because, uh, as, you, as you may know, uh, documentation is uh, really difficult to actually chunk, to know exactly how to divide it for retrieval. And my idea was that, and the idea that I've been experimenting with, why not use GPT-4 to extract essential elements and divide them into actually really structured chunks where we have all the code and description and some additional information, which just might be more suitable for retrieval. I have tried this when I was creating my Echo High video finder for my website. I do have a CSV file with all my videos and descriptions and transcriptions, but when I just uploaded it to create the Echo High video finder, I wasn't having much success. So actually, I decided to uh, create a JSON file where each element is actually like a much smaller, distinct and essential element. And that ended up working well for me. That's why I wanted to expand on this uh, using some long documentation. And this, uh, I believe, also works well, better than just, uh, you know, giving, for example, the entire documentation to create a GPT. It also, I believe, would work better if you're actually building your own vector database, because uh, this allows you to have really small chunks. And when I was watching some breakout sessions from OpenAI's Dev Day, the survey of techniques for maximizing LLM performance actually talked about when they were using different methods to achieve 98% retrieval accuracy, the most important uh, significant factor was actually the chunk size. So keeping all that in mind, we're going to explore this idea in three different files. The files will be available at Patreon, of course. Links will be in the description. So I have iteratively tried to improve on this idea. And so let's get to the nitty gritty of the situation. The documentation we're going to take a look at to use is the HTMX documentation. If you build full stack web apps, I strongly recommend you to take a look at HTMX. I have several videos on this topic. It just simplifies your life and allows you to not have so many lines of JavaScript code. But anyway, so HTMX is a very long documentation, but it's a single page documentation. But even if you were dealing with multi page documentation, you can just copy paste them into the same file or actually perhaps, uh, you know, uh, scrape them as well. I just simply copied it here and pasted it. Now, if you look at it, although it's somewhat organized, it's still really very difficult to know which parts uh, to really chunk it at. And you would have to really examine the HTML, maybe, you know, how to actually partition this. And even then, some chunks are going to be uh, much larger and some just going to be text and others heavy with code. So instead of uh, doing it manually like that or have spending a lot of time on it, I thought, well, why don't I send it to GPT-4 and get it to uh, chunk it in a way that might be meaningful using a really well-crafted system message, which we're going to talk about to turn this documentation into an object like this, where each item is separated by name, description, basic usage example, for example, explanation, uh, code examples, explanations, and any other uh, additional information that might be necessary. So these are the results that the GPT-4 returns. To do this, we have a system. Let's start with the original file. This file will be available at the $9 Patreon level, and all the files will be available at the $30 Patreon. So we open our system message, which we're going to take a look at here in a moment. And then we open our documentation, which is our uh, HTMX documentation. And then we simply make a call, right? And we, you, we are using JSON uh, response, JSON mode. And then we just get the response and just write it to a documentation. The magic really happens here with the system message. As you see, I'm asking it to extract all minimal self-containing code examples and other useful information from the documentation. I'm saying it, I'm telling it to, let me zoom in actually here. Uh, I'm telling it to adhere to the JSON schema. So I want it to return multiple elements within a JSON object, such as a name uh, and then name, name of the whatever important information is, a description for it, name for a code example, and then an explanation for a code example. These are all going to be strings. And at the end, I also have other for other information, which is list, which uh, other information, which are text, which might be relevant to whatever the essential code snippet or any essential bit of information is. Now, before, when I tried it for the first time, I did something like this. For example, there's something called polling, which is to wait for a second and then, you know, decide on uh, so if, when some event ends. Description, and then I actually had the code as a list. But then I thought it would be better if we actually gave the code 
a name as well. So name for code example one, name for code example two. We do say that, you know, there can be multiple code examples. We are also asking for an explanation for code, each code example. So in this case, we're not going to just say a code one, code two, but we're going to actually give it a name. When we did that, then we actually get the names like request indicator, uh, like targets and swapping, description, uh, and then the HX target example, which is code, explanation for it, extended selector example, explanation for it, such and so on, and the other information. This way we get a neatly organized chunk. By the way, if you're interested in finding out all my other projects, you can easily search for them at my website, echohive.live. It is a search functionality, and if you're a patron, it allows you to find the code downloads easily. Also, check out my new app, Code Hive Beta, which has over 900 plus Python chat GPT chat, uh, GPT chat applications, which you can browse, copy, and download. Uh, you can also, uh, you also have the ability to download all apps for $100 at Patreon. Link will be in the description. So the issue, uh, so, th so this works, number one, right? We give it the documentation and uh, with the system message one, we ask it to return all the essential information and it does that. However, I realized that sometimes it doesn't return everything, right? So you can run this. I'll actually run this real quick so you can see uh, how it's working. So it, it'll run and it'll return a bunch of information and then it'll save it to a file. I had changed the system message name. Anyway, I'll run it again. Uh, and then sometimes you, it's just difficult to know if it covered all the bases. See, it started HTMX description, basic usage example. So it's going to do this. But one one thing is uh, difficult to know is if it actually covered everything without manual inspection. Okay, so you can see that it's going to go ahead and do it and I save it to a file documentation.json. So I thought, well, there, there has to be a better way, right? So then I created the second file. Like I said, these files will be available at Patreon. Uh, instead, this time I thought, well, well, we'll do a loop. Okay, we'll we'll do a loop, whatever amount, like let's say five times, and we'll uh, we'll for the for the first uh, run of the loop, we'll we'll do exactly what we did in the first uh, first file, right? We'll generate the documentation.json. But then after that, I thought we'll give it back the original documentation plus the generated documentation and ask it to compare it and then fill it in any additional details and essentially rewrite the document, okay? So this this will work as well. This still uses a single system message and uh, and we are actually, the system message is exactly the same. However, here we are prompting it to say that, please compare the original documentation with the generated documentation. Uh, and fill in any missing details and ensure not to make up any information. So we are, you know, we're going to iteratively try to get it to uh, find any missing information and rewrite the documentation. So this this kind of works, but I was actually, you know, I, I felt like it could have worked better. Maybe system message uh, needs some work. You can definitely play with the temperature parameters and see if you can get it working better. So, but I'm saying this works, right? But I mean, this expands a lot of tokens. It's not that expensive now that the model is actually much cheaper than the original GPT-4, but then still, what if you had a really long documentation? Like I did with Langchain Autocoding Dynamo, I'll put the link for this in the description as well. I mean, this cost me $80 to do a similar process over the entire Langchain documentation, almost 2 million tokens. So as you can see, this can, if you're doing it like this, can grow really expensive. And plus, like you won't be able to put in entire documentation. Obviously, you run out of tokens, so you'll have to really chunk the original documentation and the generated documentation. So you're going to run into a bunch of headaches. So then I thought of the third option, where we are doing something similar, like in the second one, except this time, uh, instead of regenerating the entire documentation, we're just asking uh, GPT to generate only the missing, what it finds, finds is the missing elements and then adding it back to the JSON file. So, and then when this runs, it actually saves its progress, both the second and third one, into a, a folder called in-progress documentation. This the second file will actually run it and rewrite the documentation from scratch again and again. And when, when the loop is completed, it will write a final uh, docs. But uh, with the third, third one, you can actually see this was the first iteration. You can actually see in the minimap, this is how long it was. And on the second run, we had the exact same first documentation, but then it added a bunch of other small uh, other descriptions. And then we are not generating the documentation again and again, but each each consecutive iteration after the first one is actually finding whatever GPT thinks is missing and adds to it. Uh, this works very well, but one issue with that is that I feel like it just, uh, I, I gave it the, uh, we'll take a look at the system message again. I gave it the opportunity to actually stop by saying, 
uh, by um, doing a boolean here saying is information missing so it's able to i'm giving it the chance to return this as false and then end the loop uh, but it just seems to keep adding and adding to the documentation that shouldn't be that big of a problem since our chunks are too small and there's nothing so bad about having additional information uh, one way to make this work is that maybe you keep your uh, loop size small maybe like something like three and then you should be good to go but this definitely works I just uh, hope that it actually uh, was able to stop by its uh, by itself. So let's run this third one. Okay, I'll I'll go ahead and delete these and run the third one so you can see it in action. Uh, we're gonna run it for three loop, three times loop. So we'll be able. So it started right. It's going to pick on the uh, whatever it thinks is essential. Give a description. Give code examples and additional explanations for each and every one of them. So while this is running, let's quickly review the code again. Right. In the first file, we were just opening the system message documentation and we we're just sending it to GPT-4, returning the responses and saving it to documentation.json, getting it something like this. By the way, I did create a HTMX helper using actually this. It works pretty well, I think. And I did use the JSON file to give it as knowledge. I also enabled web browsing just in case, but I did, I did tell it uh, just only most for the most part to use uh, its documentation. Uh, you know, every time. In any case, uh, it's going on. It, it, the generation is still going on, but let's move on to the second file. So in the second file, uh, we do have a load file and save file, just generic uh, functions. And we load the original documentation. We load the uh, system message. And then we start a loop. Okay, we're going to iterate for one. We start the I at one. And then we say in the first loop, input content uh, is, is going to equal to original documentation. And in the consecutive loops, okay, we're going to retrieve, we're going to load the generated documentation and we're going to change the input content, which we're going to give as user uh, message. We're going to say, this is the original documentation. This is the generated documentation and some instructions to compare and uh, recreate the document, right? And then we again make our call and uh, save it into in progress documentation one by one until the loop is complete. In the third one, we do something very similar, except here we are, um, loading the system message based on a condition. Say, we're going to load the system message underscore one if i equals one, which will be the first iteration. And otherwise, we're going to load the system message two using the syntax, pretty, pretty smart syntax. GPT-4 recommended it. And then if, uh, if we are in the first iteration, our input content is going to be original documentation. Otherwise, our, uh, we're going to get the generated documentation, which is what the GPT had generated in the previous one. And we're going to again put it into uh, is input content is original documentation and generated documentation and ask it to again compare it at this time of course the system message is more detailed as well then uh, we are going to do some checks uh, so there's some there can be some issues with this right i'll, I'll get to it so uh, first of all we check if we are on in not in the first run but the consecutive runs we check if his information true missing is false then we break out of it uh, okay let's take a look by the way, see, we filled out, we got the first documentation, and now the second iteration is beginning. At first, it comes up with what it thinks is missing information, and sometimes it uh, actually, it tries to add the same stuff too, even though it had already taken care of, like you see HTMX overview, installing HTMX. So you can do this. Uh, I'm not sure why, we are giving you both documentation. But, uh, you know, you can try to play around with the uh, uh, system message, see if you can improve it. It doesn't always do this. But now it's going to actually create these things and it's going to add them. So to be able to manage that, I had to do uh, some hacking, so to speak. So we say, if, if you're in the first loop, we're going to get the response data from GPT and we're going to load it uh, right with JSON. And now our final documentation is going to be response data. And we're going to be saving it with json.doms we're using our save file function final documentation and we're going to save it whatever the name is going to be in that loop however uh if we are in the other loops we're going to check for missing info we are going to loop over all the response data items which is going to be returned right now and since because this this in the first system message we have a very structured and nice json object but in the second one we are including missing information and is information missing fields which we don't want to add that's why we are actually check for each key value pair 
and make sure that they are they don't match missing information or is missing information. So then we're gonna get the missing info, not including the missing information and is missing information keys. And then we're going to loop over them and we're gonna actually uh, update our final documentation with that. And then uh, we're gonna save it at the end. So this way we will be continuously adding to it. And that's about it. Uh, I hope this was clear. So uh, yeah, the one issue, like I said, is it just, uh, I believe, tries to add the same stuff again, although it's supposed to compare. You know, this, is, uh, this was my way to try to solve it. I hope you find it useful. Uh, we'll wait for this to finish and see uh, what happens. Like I said, the code files will be available at Patreon. I also do host office hours for uh, patrons. The next one is coming up this Sunday for 30 plus uh, dollar patrons. If you'd like to take a look at that, and I, I, if you become a patron, you will have access to over 170 plus projects like this, uh, uh, depending on your level, that is. And uh, the, check out the new app, Code High Beta. Uh, this is really cool, I think. You can get some inspirations or maybe some business ideas. You can, it is an instant search that you can do. It's really nice. Also check out the GPT Masterclass which includes all the basics and some advanced concepts about the GPT's API, uh, both the old version and the new version. Let's come back to this, all right. See, again, uh, it's, it again thinks it found some missing information, but we can see that now our file has grown from the original one. Uh, so I believe it has some redundant features. So that's, I guess, you know, it's probably better than not having the information. But we're going to be done after this anyway, right after editing these, and we're going to have a final documentation, such as the one I created here. And uh, yeah, so I, I use this exact one, and this, this is the one that powers the HTMX helper. I'll put the link in the description if you'd like to try it. Other than that, uh, this is about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find this uh, useful. Oh, here we are done. Now we have the entire documentation. Oh, I forgot to mention that, see, uh, so we can still run into some issues here. Number one being the API sometimes returns an error and this final documentation is not complete the first time around. And also we are still, you know, in the first iteration, the JSON object can be over 4,000 tokens. Even though the new GPT can take in 128K in tokens, it can only output, give or take, a little more than 4,000 tokens. So if it runs to this limit, then this won't be a perfect JSON object. And then, so this uh, updating operation will fail. I really couldn't find a very good solution for it. But uh, I hope this will give you some good ideas to improve upon, maybe. And uh, let me know what you think. And see you in the next one.